Hi, welcome. My name is Robin Dalko. Welcome today. We want to share uh, with you uh, some things on finance. Uh, finance is a major problem for most uh, businesses for entrepreneurs. And uh, so, some few things that we have learned, uh, we would want to just maybe uh, draw your attention to some of them. And uh, maybe some of them you will find. Uh, please subscribe to this channel this YouTube channel uh, or share with friends and family uh, you know so okay Mary welcome thank you for uh, coming oh, thank you for joining uh, so we want to talk about finance most people uh, struggle with their finances in terms of business uh, the financial sector it's it's not for startups and that's a fact and they don't have to be for startups but there are some few things that all of us if we know and practice uh, we'll be able to at least go through the first two three four five years most often which happen to be the most difficult uh, period of of a startup of an entrepreneur's life so uh, what are the things that you think we should do what are some of the things that you think we should not do in any business as an entrepreneur Okay, thank you. Um, let me talk about what we should do first, mm -hmm. and then later on I'll add what we shouldn't. So you are a new, you're starting a new business, or you've started a new business, and the very things you should try and avoid are maybe your friends. Choose your friends first. Select who you go out with, who you talk with, who who you plan with. If you are in business and you have most of your friends being employed with a continuous salary, I mean, secured money they are sure of coming in every month. And you are not sure of what you're going to make in a month. It's going to create um, some kind of confusion. Because they will, most people who are, who are in employment have a lifestyle. Um, they want to live good, they want to buy houses, cars, nice, nice um, shoes, nice bags. But you being a new business person, you are not so sure of what money is coming in every month. That you cannot determine at the early stages. So if you are so close to them and you are competing with them in terms of dressing, I mean lifestyle, you are going to choke the, the business. You are going to use the business money to, um, to pay for that kind of lifestyle. And that will let the business struggle. And things you should do, um, and no matter how small the business is, try and take data every day. Put down, if you don't have the systems to just know how many people are coming in the shop or how many people are buying, try and put down some, some things. R buy a book, pen, write whatever item is being bought in the shop. That data is going to help you predict how much sales you're going to make in the coming months. So you do that and, and make sure you, you, you are talking well with your customers. Like customers, I, I can't rule them out because they, they will make the business or break it. So you meet customers, you talk with them, you, you show some love, let them feel comfortable in your shop. That is so crucial. So data and then being your customer service should be on top. So, so these are what these are things that they should do. We should do or things, things. Things you should do. That's your data, your customer service, and the things you shouldn't do. Don't be so much in competition with those who are not in business. Mm -hmm. People who who are sure of money coming in. I mean, your friends. I'm not saying don't be friends with those people you have known for years who are not doing business, but you limit the time spent with them. Okay. So, what what are some of the financial decisions that we should not take when we start? When you start business, what are some of the things, for instance, loans? Do you think we should pick loans, uh, or you think we should we should we should be careful? I think as a startup or as a new business owner, you should avoid loans because you are not so sure how much the business is going to produce. So you can't go and negotiate for a better rate. And we all know here the interest rate is very high. So most startups may make, let's say, 10 to 20% in a year as profit. 
but we know the loans here, the interest rate is around um, 30 to 40 percent. That's official, so, bank. yes. So other people are taking is 10 percent a month. <laughs> 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 no, microfinance. <laughs> so, so let's say your business is making 30 percent a year, and then you go and sign for a loan with interest rate is 40 percent. Automatically, you can't pay. You're off. The business will struggle. Yeah. And the lenders, they are not merciful. Okay. Once you have signed that document, they will make sure they take the money up, even if. It means the business to collapse. They don't care that much. Okay, and the moment you your business is in is in is in ditch, mm. the moment you start business and you start with a loan, uh, which uh, I'm a profit, you have problem. <laughs> uh, so sometimes because you are unskilled, you are not skilled with your business, and you are unskilled with your finances. Uh, a lot of the times, you will be there for a very long time. You know, uh, because you don't know what to do. You just started on a wrong foot. It's like starting to walk and then your first step, you are in a ditch, you fall. You, 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 you can't even walk. You're learning to walk, then you're on the ground. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs lose their dreams, lose their drive just because they started on the wrong foot. You know, it's, it's, it's okay when you are, when you are a bit okay to fall. Then you have some bit of strength, but most of us, if you don't, if so, starting with a loan is is like that. Is a lot of the times, don't listen to them. It's not the best. It gets to a lot of us who start business with contract, especially government contract, institutional contract, where they give you big work, and then you have to pay finance it. So that's why I, from what I know, I don't I don't tell a lot of people who don't have any business idea, a business skill, business expertise to go for contract and go and procure loan. And uh, go and do it for somebody who will take you six years, one uh, six months, one year, two years to pay, whether it's government or not. Um, you know. So okay, so that's about loan. How about those of us who would pester people to give us money before we start? Um, family people, uh, friends. You know, most of us just technically we are beggars. We just beg people because we hinge our business decisions choices on people helping us. Is that good financial approach? You know, I, I would say that is not the best. Mm. If you have, a, I mean, a father or a mother who is willing to do that for you, you can consider. But you don't go chasing people to to put money in your business, I mean, whether they have it or not, or calling them. No, one thing is you don't have to believe that you need money to start a business. Mm. There are lots of people with zero money, but mm. they are doing business. Okay. How do they do it? Um, they know that the factory or the manufacturer mm. and they know the customers so mm -hmm. they are in between they are intermediary people mm. they go talk to the factory people and then at the same time the customers and they supply mm. this these kind of people are not putting in money mm. they only supply and take their their cuts on it okay that's also business so mm. if i mean if, at, at, from the beginning now when you're starting you don't have any money you can you can think of what to do to bring in a little money before you go in the big time. Okay. So you, wherever you are, or as little as you have, you can start mm. the business with it without worrying others to invest or to give you money. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other thing I would say is that you know most of us uh, we want we want to start life, and once we start life, we want to marry. Uh, <laughs> or we want to marry, which, which is important. If we want to buy a house or build a house which is also key, uh, some of us would want to have a car. Uh, a lot of the times, these days, in some countries, they, they give them loans to do this. Mm. In our country, we don't, we, don't, we don't technically run on such economies. So when you start and you don't have these things and you have a business, let the business do so much well before you look at these things, mm. unless they are so much required for the success of your business. You know, if your business is doing, say, 100,000 a year, why do you go to look for a car fifty thousand a year? Because that that's the revenue. It's not even profit. That's not your money. That's that, for the business. You see. Yeah. So, uh, and then why do you have to build a house? Go and buy a land, build a house. A lot of the times, the people who teach us, the people who have taught us about money, a lot of the times they didn't they didn't create money. A lot mm. of the times, most of this information that we have on money are, have come from bureaucrats and politicians and religious leaders, you know. And so, you are an entrepreneur. You really have to be square to, I mean, squarely opposite to some of these uh, 
advice that have come from people who have not been entrepreneurs because you you virtually have to grow this baby so much that the baby becomes an adult then you can you can send the baby to do something for you that adult to do something for you you know so the business has to become so much strong then you can take something out of it you have to put up with a lot of stress a lot of strain a lot of difficulties for the first five to ten years before the business starts to make any uh, you know some kind of money some kind of profit then you can go and do all, and do all this extravagant lifestyle you know those are for the wealthy those who have worked for it not but because in our community yes. success is more of what car you drive you know maybe not in just our community it's all over the world mm -hmm. uh, what car you drive where you live where your children go to school you know what you wear and therefore if you're an entrepreneur and you carry that kind of mindset to is going to be trouble for you yeah and then most of them to look up to their friends as i said earlier on mm. their friends who are working in a bank or a company who, and have been given a mortgage mm. and loan to build a house mm. they have that system i mean and they are not going to is, is the salary coming in which they are using to pay that mortgage but you have a baby to take care of you mm. have a business to nurture so you can't go by their pace mm. So some people, because of friends, their friend has gone to buy a land, they will talk to them on it and they also go, they'll have to get it. So they mm. take the business's money mm. to do that and the business will collapse. Yeah. And in, in Ghana here, if, especially if you, 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 have, you have friends or colleagues, or let's say schoolmates, classmates, who have built house and you are still living in your, your, your rented apartment, you yes. know how it is. Mm. They'll keep on asking you, are you still at the same place? Mm. Are you still living in the same area? All those things you should close your ears to mm. because you know what you're building. You know where you want to be in the next five years. You know what you want to do. So you just invest in the business. It will come to a time that you may even have to put in every money you have. Mm. Yeah, of course, they say you have to pay yourself. But mm. as a business owner, you pay yourself and that money goes back into the business. You don't yeah. need to do that. Mm. But they receive their salary and it will not get back to the company they are working with. 